you know, I remember a song that I, I don't know about you, but I sang when I was in primary school. Now that it is over, night is drawing near. Shadows of the evening still above the sky. Now fasting is <laughs> over. <laughs> so, now that fasting is over, you both, say both fastings, okay. fastings, fastings are over. Mm-hmm. You know, many fasted for the last uh, in the past few weeks uh, during Lent and Ramadan, both uh, for religious holidays. Some others, as part of their own specific diet routine, it's not about those ones that, that I which I need around. to do. After we have been told that when you fast. Your body eats up what is stored. And somebody sent me a post. You are looking fat. Okay, well, this episode is for you. <laughs> <laughs> so now, it has also been uh, you know, made clear that fasting should not stop you from training altogether. And anytime fitness... Um, and at any time, fitness. However, it's really important to be mindful of that transition phase, right? During your first week of recovery from long fasting, such as this that we have had. And it is advised to take things step by step before commencing your usual training. That step by step is what we are talking about this morning, post-fasting workout regimen. And we have Joel Uzamere again with us this morning. He is CEO Institute of Registered Exercise Professionals, IREP. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, as usual. Is it a concern, this post-fasting thing? Yes, it is um, very important that as we end the fasting, uh, for those who have lived an active lifestyle, uh, that they gradually go back into uh, their exercise routine. Um, the way the body works or the way God has created the body, if you just jump into any high intensity exercise or any high impact exercise, it will have a negative effect on you. And yeah. it becomes a major demotivator for you to actually continue or progress in your, your fitness. So, and that's the thing with fitness. You, you might want to jump into something or just anything. You want to jump into that. And if you don't do it properly, you don't get injured. Mm. Okay. Or you're discouraged from um, the fact that your body can't take it. Some people start to feel dizzy and then uh, they, they stop. Whereas there is a dosage. There is how to gradually actually Ease go back, back in. yes, into that uh, routine. So just to be clear, something that you said so, at the beginning. So, sorry, sorry. Okay. Just before I forget this. Joel, I know some people who don't say because they're fasting, they're not going to continue their exercise regime. I played tennis for years and years. And I I had friends who, although they were fasting, either during Lent or during Ramadan, still played their tennis three, four times a week. Yeah. Well, it, it depends, first of all, on what they are doing during those. Maybe if, if, if you're fasting properly, you're actually staying away from food or certain kinds of food. Mm-hmm. So if what they do is maybe they eat till pretty early in the morning, depending on what they are doing, maybe they are eating at 5 a.m. or something, mm-hmm. they have stored up glycogen. Like, they have enough energy for a workout session, maybe at six, seven, eight, thereabout. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it, it depends on the kind of fast we're talking about. But talking about this kind of fast, I, I, I'm not talking generally because I don't know when these people, when the, this particular person maybe stop eating or, or, or so. But the thing about fasting, anyhow you are doing it, is when you are, in, during that period, your routine can't be the same. It cannot be the same. Because let me tell you how the body works. Cannot or should not. Well, because when, you, when I say should not, the reason why, why I say cannot is because, of course, you can do it, and, but what, what will happen is that you will have an adverse effect. Mm-hmm. Okay? So they are playing the tennis throughout. Mm-hmm. But did you, if you go back to other things they do, do they go home and collapse? 
or do they go home and are still able to perform? I've said this here many times. Physical fitness is the ability for you to be able to, you know, with vigor and strength, be able to do your daily activity, whatever you do as a person. Mm -hmm. And when you're done with all those daily activity, you still have enough energy, yeah, for either leisure or emergency. That's what physical fitness, that's the definition of physical fitness. Of course, uh, the WHO will have, um, and not living uh, a, a terrible lifestyle like drinking and smoking. But the point I'm trying to make here is this. Your body uses energy. What gives you energy is the food that you eat. So when you, when you are fasting, it means that you are depriving your body of immediate um, calories or uh, uh, energy mm. uh, called glycogen in your bloodstream that will help you work. work. And so even if you want to take from the stored um, fat that you have and, and all that, it, it, it must be a routine that is cardiovascular in nature that is not very intense. And so you gradually build your body back up to where you were before mm. or where you want to get to. Something you said earlier that I just want to draw attention to. So essentially you're saying that generally yeah. the body yeah. does not like sudden. No, no, it doesn't. No, no. So let me use one part of the body that is very important to explain this. It's the human heart. In exercise or in fitness, um, the human heart, the way it works is it has its own rhythm. It has its own beat. It, it works, um, you know, by itself. It's one of those things we call involuntary muscle. You don't have to do anything. It's working um, on, on its own. And um, what you find is that when you start a, an exercise routine, and you just go up. From zero to 100. Yeah, from zero to <laughs> 60 or to 100. You are in danger of hurting your heart. Or if you have any underlining sicknesses or issues. Maybe, for instance, you have plaques around your vessels. Mm. Yeah? What will happen is that all of a sudden, that vessel will pick up plaques and maybe block um, that pathway which of course will that cause heart attack or stroke, yeah, as we know. So when it comes to the heart, you, you have to gradually take it up. And even when it comes to finishing a routine, you have to gradually bring it down. Okay. So just let me just say, so when we're working, there's something we call warm-up phase yeah. or yeah. pulse razor phase. So yeah. when you start your workout, there's something called warm-up, but that warm-up is not the warm-up you know it as. Warm-up has in it three things. It has pulse razor, mobility, and stretches. So that, that pulse razor is really conditioning or preparing your heart to start a workout routine. Now, that is even when you are fit and, and you know, you're mm -hmm. not fasting. Mm -hmm. not, not to talk about now when you are fasting. You should gradually take up that heart rate. Yeah. Let it be where, you know, you're very mm -hmm. comfortable and then you bring it down. Most of the problems we have is that people don't know where they should stay. So don't shock your heart. No, yes. Don't, yeah. <laughs> they don't know where they don't should shock stay. It. So how about flight or fight circumstances? Yes. It happens suddenly, doesn't it? Yes. And then you decide to either run or jump or fight or something. Yes, yes. How, Essentially, the hormone that does that is the adrenaline in your body, okay. uh, which we call the f uh, fight or flight. Now, that doesn't happen every day, does it? Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you are not constantly living a life where you wake up in your morning, you are, you are all jittered up. Yeah, and you find some people that because they are jumpy, all of a sudden they slump. Mm. You've had times where just shock. People are just in shock and they can't move or they are shaking or, you know, they, they have an issue. For, so that's not how to live. You can't be living that, that way. But that can happen once in a while. Mm. And your heart, if your heart is healthy, you can take it. But that, doesn't, that shouldn't be the way you are living your life, you know, yeah. you, you, the heart is not, it's, uh, it's not normal. No, that's not the way the heart should work. It's yeah. a gradual pace. And even when you're finishing an, a high intensity workout, you should gradually reduce um, your pace as okay. you come down back to whatever you've been doing. Yeah. Okay. You should now, unwind. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You have wonderful phrases for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just to be clear. Yeah. Um, to what Alero said earlier about some people working out during prolonged yeah. fasting periods. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, l l give us the minimum basic that someone okay. should have been involved in. Okay. And if the person has outdone himself or herself, mm -hmm. is there a 
Yes. A dial back. Yes. yes. So, we, I mean, um, thank you for this question because it is very important that we all know that intensity in exercise must be calculated at every given time. Mm. Okay? And as an exercise professional, what you do is that you have three ways you can actually measure that. But the first one, which you don't need to, uh, we don't need to talk about, um, is oxygen update um, uh, rate. Uh, that uses a lot of, you know, you need machines and, and all that. But there's also one called at rate reserve, at rate and at rate reserve. And then there's one called rate of perceived exertion. Those two tools for measuring intensity does not need any equipment. Now, that first one, let me tell you how you ought to know what to do. Now, when you are exercising, you must always find out what is my maximum at rate. What is the, 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 the number or the pulse rate per minute that my heart should get to when I'm exercising? So that means if my heart gets to, let's say, 180 beats per minute, should I be worried? Or should I know that I've gotten to a place where I need to come back low? Okay? Now, vis-a-vis, -vis, get into a number like 60 and thinking that maybe you maybe you get to maybe 80 or 90 or you're like, okay, since I'm on 90 and they've told us that our heart rate should not be too high, I think I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a sense, you have a place where you shouldn't go beyond and you have a place where you should go beyond mm -hmm. just so that you can be fit. Now, in between that spectrum, at different levels of physical fitness, all having benefits to the human body. So, how do we check what our threshold is? So, let me tell you. So, if you're listening, write down 207. Now, this value I'm giving you now. So, let me just say this. Normally, people will tell you 220 minus your age. Okay? I'm not, maybe you guys have heard that before. I'm sure some of the viewers have heard that before. Now, that number was given to us um, in 1971. And the research that brought out that, that figure for the maximum heart rate, are you with me? Yeah. Was, um, was not a very good... Um, uh, the, the, the sampling that was used was very fit athletes. And it was very, very small number. So years after, in 2001, there was, a tycoon, there was another person who did... Uh, there was a research that came out. But there's one we use now called Gillish. Okay. Now, this one I'm even talking to you about, it's not for everyone. If you have a lifestyle disease, there's a different number we will use. Okay. But just generically, if you have, if you are fit, if you are just normal, you look okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, no underlining you life. You look okay, you feel okay. You feel okay, Generally. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you don't have any lifestyle disease. You're not obese or anything like that. Um, you can use the Gillish. The Gillish is more of 2007. Okay. And the Gillish formula is 207. Uh -huh minus 70 percent of your age yeah sorry about that so what you need to find out first is if you are um whatever your age is get 70 percent what is 70 percent of your age if you have a calculator what you can do is do 0 0.7 times your age 0 0.7 times your age yeah, yeah. <laughs> 0 0.7 times, times your age uh-huh now, subtract that number. From, just do minus mm -hmm. 207. It will give you a negative, but you, you, tip, you Zero, just use the number. 0 0.7. Okay. What did it give you? Minus 167. Good. So, this 167, when you're exercising, must be your maximum heart rate. At that point, nothing will happen to you. You will, There won't be... Have you heard people that they, they do high intense stuff and they collapse? I hope you've, you've heard that. It's, yeah. it's, it was rampant. Uh, Somebody was just yeah, warming up. Warming, warming up. up, yes. And he and, collapsed. Yes. So now, th uh, knowing that number is quite important. Now, Please that's say the, that again. For, for those of again. us who didn't get it. <laughs> 0 0.7. Mm -hmm. 0 0.7, mm -hmm. which is 70% really, mm -hmm. times your age. 0.7 times your age. Yes. 0 0.7 Seven times, times your, your age. Uh -huh. Yes. Minus 207. I'm using a particular Minus formula that was formulated in 2007. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you are 45, it's 251. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, let me, <laughs> let me, some, some, you remember that too, that the, 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 this technique is called heart rate, heart rate reserve. Mm. Now, this number that you have gotten now, mm. A exercise professional, that's not all you need. Oh. The question is, no, let me tell you why. The question is, let's say, for instance, we are both the same age. 
and we do the calculation and our heart rate is the same. The question is, do we have the same exercise experience? If I've been, if I've, I've been sitting at home all day and you've been a long tennis player all your life, we can't be training at the same heart rate. Yeah. So aside from knowing that number, first of all, is that what do you do with the number? Now, I know this is my limit, so at least that helps you not to collapse. Yeah. So when you're in the gym, whatever people are doing, they are flying, they are, just check. <laughs> I have when reached you my limit. That, that you have gotten there, just calm down. Now, mm. I am not saying that the minute you meet that limit, you will collapse on the floor. But I'm saying that scientifically, if you get to that limit, you are already working the heart. So if, you, if I want to so walk my... Begin to unwind. Yeah, if I want to work my generator, do I have to overwork it for it to perform properly? No. no. When I overwork it, it actually doesn't perform properly. But when I put the right, you know, appliances on the generator, it will work perfectly. Mm. Isn't it? So that's kind of the idea here. Your, your maximum heart rate just helps you to know, okay, this is where I, sh I shouldn't get to. Now, your heart rate reserve is now what tells you the minimum and the maximum to, to go on. And, and these are the things that are very, very important for all trainers to know. I, honestly, it is not your job to be calculating all these things. You have your own... You have your own stuff. But the idea is that when you meet a professional, you should be able to say, okay, this is your art, maximum art rate, yeah? Uh, this is the zone you should be training in. And then even calculate the amount, the amount of calories you are burning based off your workout. Very, very simple stuff to do, to calculate calories per workout. But you speak to the average person. person doesn't know how to do I'm talking about trainers now. But obviously, as I always say, as students, these are the things they are learning so that they can really bring value to people that come to them. So now, the next thing to do is a bit technical, and it's not for everyone. It's for fit professionals. There's a formula that we use to calculate the heart rate reserve. It's called the Kevonian theory, but don't worry about it. So it's um, you take that value, maximum your maximum heart rate, uh, you calculate it vis-a-vis uh, -vis your resting heart rate times you know, your age, blah, blah, blah. Now, the reason why I'm saying all that is <laughs> at least knowing your maximum heart rate, at, at least it helps you. But what the professional then does is that it takes that data and uses that data with another calculation, uh, the Kevonian especially, uh, globally accepted by exercise professionals and uh, scientists, and uses it to get what we call your heart rate reserve. So meaning this is the minimum you should work out with for, for your heart to be developing. Because you can be working out and your heart is actually not developing. You, you are not actually pushing it to, to its limits in such a way that you get the, the, value, the benefits the that you want from it. Yeah. And so that is important. This is overdoing it and not working out. Now, you may ask me, which I just quickly want to say, that what is the benefit of getting it right? Now, the heart itself has what we call cardiovascular output or cardiac output, meaning that the quantity of blood that your heart pumps into your body in a minute. So a good example is this. Theoretically, the human heart pumps about four liters of blood per minute. Yeah, that's what it does. Now, if your heart is weak, we call it the LV, the, uh, the side of the heart that pumps the oxygenated blood. When it is weak, if it's supposed to pump four liters, for, for example, in 30 beats, are you with me? Mm -hmm. Because it is weak, it can only Less. pump maybe two letters in that one minute. It will have to beat 60 times to achieve four liters. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. So when your heart is not strong and you're not training it at a level where there's development, where capillaries are growing around it and it's developing and it's strong and the muscles around it are strong and they can pump, what happens is that you will quick, you'll quickly come up with you know, a cardiac disease or a cardiac um, this, this condition, function, yeah, you will, you know, your heart will not be performing as it should, which will affect your entire body, which will affect how well you even live your life. So that's important. I just said that so that you know the importance of ensuring that you, your heart rate is at the right place. Let me remind you. It. Let me remind you of the simple question I asked. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, are you saying, I'm not a... Simple question I asked. Yes. You. Those who have overdone it. Yes. Overdone. During yeah. fasting. Yes. Is there a comeback? So and those who need to ease back in, mm. that's who will now you know be speaking to them. 
How do we get? Well, for, for those who have overdone it. Overdone their workout. They would work out during fasting. Yes. Uh, Allow me to say a, a, a pigeon word. Body go tell you. Mm. Body go tell you means that if you don't have enough energy and you go and do high intensity exercise, if you, I don't care who you are, you will be fatigued. And Your technically, begin to see yeah, and you say people say, you know, they, they were feeling dizzy. <laughs> you, you, you can't do that. Okay. The body works with energy. So those people naturally they will work. not be able to work out as often as they've been doing or do other and things. And so they will, they will just te technically just come back to try to rest, which can be discouraging. They may think, oh, I'm not performing as I should. I'm not eating those shots as, as I should. And so there may, there may be some discouragement from that. But what you know, I'll encourage them to do is to go back gradually. So how do we now go back gradually? Yes. Fasting, now fasting is You're over. You're done. Yes. Uh, both Fantastic. the religions are yes. done with the intense 40 days and 30 days <laughs> of fasting. Uh, and um, some have even plunged into eating the yes. way they normally do. I was going do. to talk about that first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happens usually during fasting is that we fitness trainers um, get into trouble. Why? By the time we come back and do a physical assessment for our, for, our, for our trainers, they've lost stamina, they've lost balance, they've lost stability, they've lost even the will to eat meat. Okay? Because it's like a revenge. <laughs> I was starved for this amount of days. And revenge. Now I'm going to show my body. Revenge against Self food. Nice food. That I can do it. And you know, you tell yourself things like I always tell my students, there's nothing like cheat day. It doesn't exist. It's, it's a meat that makes you go back to the food. Let's say it again. There's nothing like cheat day. Say it one more time. <laughs> to, to use Let's, the British language, told them. <laughs> the, the problem that people have is that they are trying to give you reward for your hard work. But they don't know that cheat days is not reward. Cheat day is more like um, taking you back to where you were before. No, but the thing is... But that let, let, let me just... Okay, go ahead. If you haven't been eating, well, if you have been fasting, yes. your body gets used to the fast. Okay. So your body is now used to not having food between 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. Fantastic. Oh, before, so when you now midnight. want to start eating, yes. your body will be asking for the food gradually. There's no way I, you can just jump into no. oh, eating some people three jump, square ah, meals a day. Yeah, not just three square. Uh, yeah, like six circle or rectangular meals <laughs> that people are able to do. The problem... Some, you know, can the body that? really take that? Food is not just physiological. It's also psychological. No, sorry. sorry. Can the body really take that? <laughs> it begins with, can the mouth take, take it? Let, let me give you an example. <laughs> do you know in this part of the world, we eat till we are full? Do you, do you know that? I, I grew up like that. We eat till we are full. Yeah, I mean, when I'm eating, you say, ah, mommy, I'm not full. And somehow in your mind, you think that when you are full is when you have eaten. But when you are done eating, you find out that you want to sleep. L let's not even go to food today. Because you have overeaten. Because you have overeaten. So, it's, do, do you know that most people that struggle with obesity, they struggle with obesity from the point of uh, stress. And so they are trying to, so it's emotional. They are trying to kick away stress. And so they are just eating. They are just eating. They are just eating. They're just eating. They call it stress eating. Yeah. And it's not about the belly anymore. No, uh, the stomach anymore. It's no. it's just emotional. So food has three things in it. Actually, physiological. You have the psychological, and you have the art. Some people just enjoy certain meals. It might be very small, but that is what they want to eat. Yeah, and they love the way it looks, and so it appeals to them. I have so, a friend that I know who just loves a particular soda. It's black. Go ahead. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was something else. You know, that, that I'm, one. Is, I'm not looking at you. Say I'm only looking at you. Right. Addition for uh, sugar. Uh, yeah, forget. If okay. that brand goes, they will move to another brand. Okay. Straight away. Straight. They are not loyal to that brand. Is if they can make it locally, you know. Thank God we cannot make that those things locally. They will make it in their house. So it's not the brand. It's that. I know. I know. I'm just. I'm just saying. Yeah. And I'm. You see, I'm only looking at you. Yes. Yes. I know. No. We are okay, just looking okay. at each other. There's mm. nobody else. Anyway. Mm. By the way. <laughs> um, by by yeah. the way. So as we we're saying. Yes. So. Yes, yes, as we're saying, mm. what you should do, obviously, I'm, I'm sure you, most people know this, is you start with fruits, okay? Start with, you know, things that are not fried and overcooked and just gradually go back. So if you've not been eating for those hours, you should 
maybe eat once in between those hours the first day mm -hmm. the second day increase it to just maybe your portion a bit just gradually phase yourself into those things now the reality is most of people that fasted they, they're not necessarily living a life a healthy lifestyle they've been eating all their food uh, they are not really checking it's those who have been li living a lifestyle that will take opportunity of this fasting and be like okay now that i'm fasting this is a good time to do this to or do that. this and because they are aware of their health and so they will take a good use of the fast and not just plunge back into food but 90% of the people who do this are not really looking at their... their they, they've suffered. <laughs> you know, and suffer. the suffering is over. <laughs> and so it's time to let the food know that I'm master. Baba. You know, okay. And so they jump. Okay. So that's Baba. for the food. Now for the exercise, as <laughs> you said, it is as you build a house, you go back and you check your foundations. You, you go back to your balance. You go back to your stamina. You go back to checking, of course, doing a full fitness assessment before you know what to do. And then you gradually go back. And you want to start with exercise, as I said before, that are, that are between low to mid intensity. Mm. For the first one to two weeks, there shouldn't be any high intense uh, exercises that you're doing. Uh, the, the thing is, we're so much in a hurry. I don't know where we're going to. Uh, but if, as long as you're not you know, you know, training for an Olympic that's next week, just take it easy. Go to the gym, do mid to low intensity exercises, um, for that time, and then do exercises that are not high impact in nature. Those are two different things. The minute you're able to do that, you will find that in the coming weeks, your body is now ready, mm. you know, to do more. And then you will not be demotivated by, maybe by injury or by uh, ability of not to perform your exercise. For instance, if you plan to do uh, eight reps of an exercise and you're only able to do six, there's a way your mind begins to tell you you're not able but when you're planning to do eight and you can do nine you're pumped you're like yeah i can do more but that happens when you know where you are mm -hmm. and you're training based on where you are okay and so those elements have what to do i can go into specifics but i just want to mention those two things you know just to um i know that we're running out of time but yeah. i came across this thing they call the daily 50s mm -hmm. have you come across them daily 50 yes so um there are very few things that you can do you s uh, stand up sit down oh, okay. um you pump yourself on a chair yeah. 10 times yeah. you stand against a wall yeah. uh, with your oh. knee you know uh, that 90 degree stand yeah uh, 10 wall, seconds wall yeah. yeah wall squats and all those things and oh. then you lift your you know yeah 10 10 times. Well, yeah. one is 10 seconds. Well, two of them are 10 seconds. Yeah. One of the three others are 10 push-ups. They call them the daily 50s. Yeah, how, right. how, prof how profitable or productive are those on the body? I, I am a, a champion for physical activity. Anything that gets you off the bed, off the chair, and to move a bit faster, and for it is physical activity. And so that, uh, what you call it now? Daily 50. Daily 50 is good because 50s. we, it's a good thing because we live in a day where everyone is seated. They're at home. The kitchen is just right there. Yeah. And they are walking from home. You get the point. And um, uh, nobody's moving anymore. Nobody's moving anymore. So such things are good, but don't confuse physical activity with physical fitness. Hmm. That is not the same thing. Whatever you're doing is good. But you can do better. And with better is physical fitness. Physical fitness is measured, is prescribed, is repeatable, is measurable, it's specific. You have an actual physical fitness goal that you are trying to achieve. And based on that goal, you are doing certain things, yeah, with different principles of exercise to achieve those things. That's physical fitness. But yeah, so um, yeah, so go ahead and do that. But if you're obese or you have a lifestyle disease and you do the fifties, uh, the daily fifties all day, some people are hung on these things. Yeah, yeah, you can be hung on it. But the problem is, if you have a lifestyle disease or you ha there's a particular intensity you need to be working out in, let's say for weight loss, you will maybe you might if, if you're forty, be careful that you don't go at that fifty. Oh, Joe. Yeah. Is your wife also an exercise freak? Freak out. No, 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 no. This is my profession. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Does she join you no. in uh, exercising? 
well my, my schedule is too tight for me to do it, with to do it from time to time that happens but the, the, the i don't she's, know why you're asking she's, me she's, should i allow her to ask you okay why? yeah go ahead what? You, what no i just want to know if uh, is she slim <laughs> what well physical fitness i've said it here it's not about whether you're slim no I'm, I, I answer my question now uh, well, you I don't have, want to you, know whether she's fit. You I need want the, to know whether she's slim. No, you need oh, their wedding picture. The beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So whatever I tell you, you have to take it. Yes, you tell. So tell yeah, me. Yeah, she's. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Even if she's obese. Mwah. What's your she's own? Mwah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Obesity you still haven't told us why you. No, mwah. no. I didn't say she's obese. So oh. <laughs> don't go there. So mm -hmm. let me say this. Does she exercise? Yes, as well. I didn't want to say it, but if you know, if a woman just gives birth, there's a time. That you can't be as active as you used to. True. So True. those are, there are such yeah. times oh, okay. when people shouldn't yes. exercise, right? Yes. You've talked about two of them today now. One of such times that they shouldn't exercise as intensely. Yes. Is when you're you're yeah. fasting, fasting. Or you're fasting, or, or when you just give birth. Yeah. So giving birth now. You should, but that, they, they have another routine altogether. Exactly. In fact, it's that that's should, when. They, they, they That's when you need to exercise the before most. and after. Now, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that you go for a Taibo class or a heat class, you know, the very intense classes. Oh, okay. It doesn't mean that you're now joining a marathon because someone told you that. No. You, should, you get the point. So you see that even just looking at, you know, being pregnant, there is the type mm -hmm. and the intensity and the frequency. Different from the normal. Yes, that is different. So... For such people, there are exercises that... Because it, they, it will help you during yes, child's birth as, anyway. As, yes. So, <clears throat> there are exercises that they, they, they are prescribed exercises. Yes. That they will do post, pre, and post giving birth. So, you, you might not be able to follow me to the gym, but in the house, they are active. They are moving about. They are carrying their kids. They are mm. doing those things. And, is, there, uh, is, there, is there any... My apologies. Is there any chance that during fasting... Yes. Uh, when someone has to cut down on, on the intensity yes. of exercises some quote-unquote debilitating illnesses may show up that maybe because you cut down on certain activities something suddenly came up that you were that were being masked before well i, I think that's possible but okay. that would be something that maybe a, a doctor will now be able to speak to uh, okay. about but um from my own point of view uh the fasting period is not you know, like six months or that kind of thing. The things that happen during these times is that you kind of lose your routine. Mm -hmm. That's usually mm -hmm. what happened, which one I'm talking about. If you are someone that usually goes to the gym a lot and um, you stopped going to the gym because of the fast, instead of <coughs> reducing your intensity. You not know, cutting it out. Too not cutting, I, no, no. If that's, what, that, that's not what I've said. I've, that, so if you're fasting, I'm not saying don't go to there. I'm saying when you go there, you can't keep doing what you've been doing before. Reduce your intensity and stay active and fit. But when you're done with that, don't just go back to where you were before. Gradually move away from there back to where okay. you want to be. Okay. That, that's what I'm saying. Okay. You know, so um, if you are someone who uh, during the fast, you were you know, going to the gym a lot, what, what can happen if your intensity was high is that you may be demotivated because maybe you feel dizzy or those kinds of things. But I don't think they can be a, an illness. Okay. Something that will need maybe like medical, except there was an underlining that was, that that was there before and then uh, you not eating just brings it up, which okay. will be a doctor's job. But together. aside from that, there is, there is okay. really... You know, they, I, I like to talk about this. Again, I go back to young people. Um, there is the assumption that young people have the energy naturally. Mm. Um, is that assumption correct? And what, how, sh how important is fitness even for them as young people, even though they have all the energy? First of all, that is not true. I think it's in Japan. They don't just retire you because you're 60. They retire you based on your physical fitness test. Uh -huh. Yes. There are people who are 28. I've, I've worked with them, 28, 30. They have serious life-threatening lifestyle diseases. Yeah. There's someone we posted on our social media platform. It's a woman, in, I think, in the US. She's, I think, she's around the 70s, and she just did, a, she just broke a world record for the longest plank exercise. Something that a young person can't even do. She just did it. So physical fitness has nothing to do with your age. Uh, recently, when I was at the 
um, uh, there's a meeting we usually have, uh, fitness professionals usually have globally, and this meeting was in Spain. And one of the things that we, we discussed in that meeting is this idea that people over 50, is usually even more stereotyped around 60, the minute you're over 60, there are some exercises you shouldn't do. You now become this fragile, um, able to just easily break That's not kind true. of person. That's not true. Mm -hmm. and, and you see people treat people that way okay. as though, you know, they, they are fine. And then the young people, you think that they can do it. And then before you know it, they're on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's there's, a lot of messages long on X. Yeah. 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 It's mm -hmm. what you've been doing. A, a quick, quick feedback. Uh, yes. Um, Alain Rewaju says on X, prices not coming down borders on patriotism and the failure of the system. I beg, government, get work to do. Yeah, we, we took that Tell earlier. us about it. Well, then, I, guess, I guess that has a way of affecting the way people do whatever they do. Has the rebound affected the prices of fuel and diesel? <laughs> Good question. Well, well, they say it's affected diesel. Mm -hmm. Joel Zamere, mm -hmm. Chief Executive Officer, Institute of Registered Exercise Professionals. Thank you again for being here this morning. It's always, always exciting when you're here. Thank you. Always Thank a you delight. At least you have not told Alera not to eat. Hmm. Well, she knows what to do. No, he can tell me not to eat as long as he doesn't tell me not to eat cake. <laughs> mm, yeah, so that's our program for today. Please, let's... Uh... Let's not eat cake. Ayo, be careful. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Alera Edu, and I wish you all the best until we bring you a fresh edition next Saturday. See you then. And I'm Aya Makine. Have a wonderful rest of your week.